Hello and welcome back to The Vibe right here on Penn's Peak Radio. I have a very special guest joining me today. He is one of the founding members of the all-family vocal group from the 1960s, the Cowsills. Bob Cowsill is on the other line this morning. Bob, how are you doing today? Oh, we're doing great. We're having a great tour this summer and looking forward to coming your way. <laughs> yeah, so you're in the Happy Together Tour. That must be an exciting thing going on, you know? You know, i got to tell you, Cody, at this point in all of our lives, the groups on this tour, we're very grateful and very happy to have such a successful tour. You know, candidly, we're doing with each other six bands, what we all could do alone in the old days. But it, by combining, we've kept it going, and the audience is still there. Of course, that's the only reason we're here is because the audience is there. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty incredible, really. It, it very, it's a very incredible, man. I mean, I, I grew up listening to the 60s. My parents used to play that stuff, my grandparents, and uh, I really dig yeah. your music. I like it. Yeah, my kids dug it. You know, the thing is, and that's what's carrying this tour, are these songs. They're, they're just fantastic. And, and our, our music... You know, it bonded our generation in a very special way uh, that won't be able to be done anymore. So these songs are very important to the audience and to the artists, and they carry all of us now. Right. When we were younger, we we carried the songs. Now the songs are carrying us. They really are, too. Yeah, that's it's, that's it's a incredible. great night of hits. Oh, I, I wish I could be there, but unfortunately I won't be able to make it, but... I know it's going to be great. I know it's going to be great. How did you first That's get okay. into music? I mean, what did you do to initially get into music? And uh, what was your initial, like, oh, okay, I want to do that. I want to get into the music industry. Well, the, the initial thing that happened was when I was seven and my older brother Bill was eight, my dad brought us a couple of four-string guitars from overseas. He was in the Navy. Oh, and, there you go. And, yeah, even at that age, um, we took to it. And his friend showed us some chords. And so we started playing guitar at seven and eight year olds. Now, as 10 and 12 year olds, 10 and 11, we had our first paying gig, my brother Bill and I. And wow. we were singing like Everly Brothers and Ricky yeah. Nelson at that point. Um, and uh, we got a first paying gig at the Women's Newport Luncheon Club in Rhode Island. <laughs> and they gave us $10 each. And we were, that was it. I mean, <laughs> we couldn't believe it. <laughs> we, we, $10. That's like a thousand to a 10 year old. You know that. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. It, it, it's very memorable. You remember when you first heard yourself on the radio. You remember when you were first paid to sing. Yeah. And uh, for me, that was 10 years old. So it's a big. it was a big deal. We took to it and never looked back. Oh, I can imagine. And, you know, you were part of the Cow Sills, which was the, as I said before, the all-family vocal group. So you and your brother, you started this band, correct? You were one of the founding members? Yeah. Well, there were two of us. And then you know what happened. The Beatles came along. Oh, yeah. You know, we... <laughs> Now, we have brothers, you know, there's six sons in this family, so me and Bill, we just we just pulled from within the family. Now, look, candidly, we were all born with a, a DNA, the genetic factor was there for music. Yeah. Uh, but, but we're not, at, at a young age, you're not thinking like that. You're just thinking, look, Barry and John, those are our brothers. You're the drummer, you're the bass player. <laughs> and we were off and running uh, yeah. once we had the Beatles to show us, you know, what equipment to get, what songs to learn, how to, how you to look. We went pop. We went total pop after we'd gone through the folk music phase. Right. Uh, so then there were four of us. And that's the foursome that, uh, uh, when we were in high school. In 65, we got signed to Joda Records and Mercury Phillips Records, two labels that both ended up dropping us because we put out singles that failed. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, a after that happened, now I'm in the 11th grade. Now they come up with a brilliant idea. I mean, look, it's four brothers. We look like the Beatles. We act like them because we're <laughs> idiot teenagers, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so now we've been dropped from two labels. Now my dad and our manager at the time, Lenny Stogel, they, they came up with the idea of putting our mother in the group. Right. Now we've been dropped from two labels. Me and Bill, we're, we're 15 and 16. And, and, you know, you're telling us our mother is now coming in. At this point, we're, we're thinking this thing is just never going to go. It is a buzzkill. <laughs> oh, my God. Our mother in the group. Are you people serious? Well, <laughs> then, of course, <laughs> we signed with MGM and had the Rain the Park and other things with Mom, and it sells a million copies, and we've done it. And Mom is definitely in the group. Yeah. And then Susan, she's seven years old, so we bring her in. Paul's in. Everyone's in now. 
and we're off and running and having a, a wonderful career. You know what's funny? In this day and age, I don't think it could do that with different brothers and bands because normally stuff like that just doesn't fly nowadays with the way the music culture is. And then, of course, bringing a parent in the band. I mean, that's just – that'll be, like, unheard of. But back in the 60s, I mean, that was kind of almost a common thing. I mean, you you inspired the, uh, the Partridge family. So – Yeah, but, you know, the Partridge family was cool because – they came to talk to us to see if we could be the kids in that show. Get out of here. We were here. getting wow. older. Yeah, we were getting older, though. Yeah, I, right. I mean, I was like 18 when they came at us. Right. So they wanted younger, the earlier councils. And that's what they got, you know, when they went to Central Casting. But they had a real good show. But, yeah, back then, t- today, it's so fractured. I mean, there are millionaires and hit records over there. I don't know their song, and I don't know their name. But they're there, you know? Right. Where, where in, the old, in our day... If you went on Ed Sullivan, that's 8 o'clock Sunday night, the United States of America was sitting there and watching you. Right. And we all listened to the same radio station. So that's why these songs connected us, and our memories are very strong with our music, uh, the boomer generation. Right, and this tour... This Happy Together tour, it started in 1984. I looked this up, and I'm yeah. not sure, were you a part of the beginning of that, or did you jump in there a little later on? Nope, we came way late. Look, they, they've been at this for years. Now, in the current way it is, the Happy Together tour, this is our ninth year. We okay. came on four years ago. Uh, oh, this okay. is our fourth summer. And at the time we came on, they had an every other year policy with the groups. You know, if you did one year, you skipped a year, then came back maybe another year. But I think the audience and the groups are getting a little too old <laughs> to have that policy anymore. Yeah. Uh, so we're back every year. You know, we're going to take this out to the end. And uh, we don't know if the audience is going to disappear first or we're going to disappear first. But apparently, we're all going to bop till we drop. Yeah, I mean, that, listen, that, that, like you said, that music, it just stays with you forever. It's yeah. great music. It's a magical show. Oh, yeah. it very much is. Uh, do you idolize anybody in the industry now or maybe when you were growing up? Was there somebody that you looked to and said, oh, my gosh, I want to be like that guy? Well, oddly enough, because back then, we didn't know each other. And we didn't know how we, what anyone was like, you know. So right. when I answer this, it's from a perspective of not knowing people. But back then, you know, uh, we looked up to Three Dog Night and Chuck Negron, who happens to be on this tour. Right. So now I get to know Chuck Negron. But I, I get to meet Chuck Negron, the happy 76-year-old guy who's, who's amazed he's even alive. <laughs> so I have a happy Chuck Negron, not the wild guy from Three Dog Night back yeah. in the day, you know. Yeah. So everyone's kind of <laughs> calmed down that I'm meeting. Uh, so, but back in the day, look, I mean, we all admired the Beatles. We, if it weren't for the Beatles, a lot of us would not have pursued this only because at the time they came out, I was 15 and 14. I was so ready to, to just, what do we do? What do we do? You know? Right. Oh, of course. Fantastic. Yeah. But the show is great. And, and, you know, I've got to be honest, the Happy Together show took the cow sills and put us back on the, on a map because, a lot's going on. I mean, we, we have a recording project. We have a Pledge Music campaign. If you think Pledge Music, that's like Kickstarter. Right. That's going okay. all summer. And, and if you go to Pledge Music and put in councils, you'll see what we're up to. And we have an a cappella project. There's wow. Some, it's just, you think you're too old to do anything. Well, guess what? <laughs> you're not. That is not the case. <laughs> no. That is not the case. You just got to keep going until... Like I say, until the audience isn't there or you're, you're just spent. Oh, man. I mean, that's so neat. Acapella is something that I love to hear. I mean, I like those different movies that they come out with recently. That they've been coming out with Oh, us. yeah. Look, once we went in the studio to do acapella, we, we just said, okay, Glee meets It's Perfect. A yeah. Perfect pitch, you know? It's yeah. like you take your hits and you, you put what you know down, but then you can build upon them and make them a little different in the acapella scenario you know so that was right. very challenging it was very cool we have a cd of that on our merchandise table out here this summer on the happy together tour so people can hear what that's like and what's going on there speaking of merchandise do you get to interact with your fans maybe before the show or after the show of this tour oh sure we we now when, now i'm only talking about the cow seals okay? okay right but we come out after every single show and have our own meet and greet Oh, that's so. The, the kind awesome. of the words gotten out about us, so, so people that want to talk to us, they hang around and wait for us now. Yeah. So yeah, we do a meet and greet April show. We go out and hang around and just chat with whoever's whoever's left over and hasn't gone home yet. Oh, that is, and it's a lot of fun. Oh, it, it sounds fun. fun. I mean, 
I mean, yeah. I'm thinking the rain in the park, and the other things like that song to me, the only, <laughs> I know it's funny, but the movie that I remember that from is Dumb and Dumber. And I was no like, kidding. yeah, yeah. They played that in that movie, Dumb and Dumber in like 94 or whenever it was. But uh, I just remember that song and I, and I heard it in that movie and then I looked you guys up and I was like, oh my gosh, I remember that song and I love that song. So to meet you, the, the guys who sing the song, it's just, that would be amazing. You know what I mean? We're still alive. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. He did that, Jim Carrey. And my daughter called me from the theater and said, your song's in Dumb and Dumber, because at the time, we didn't have any control of that stuff. But right. we do now, but we didn't. Yeah. That's okay. We're, we're thrilled it was in there. He kept going back to it. He, he went back to that song on three times in, that, in the middle of that movie. Yeah. You know, now, he <laughs> farted. He also farted during it, so it doesn't go to my head, you know. Yeah, but it yeah. was in there. And and it really gave life to that song. I was so happy that something so cool had our song in it because I thought Dumb and Dumber was the greatest guy movie ever made. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> That's I so ironic. I never, and and I'm going to tell you, Cody, they played that movie. It's played constantly since then. So we get a lot of run out of that movie and yeah. that song. It's oh, a good thing. yeah. I mean, you're 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 doing pretty good. I can imagine. It's it's probably yep. You're, you're a smile on yep. your face every day you wake up. You know, it's pretty good. Every morning is a great morning. Yeah. The start of a great day. Yeah. Now the day is going to happen to you, so it might <laughs> yeah. later in the day. But that's how I wake up. Yeah, man. Hey, you always got to be optimistic through the day, though. You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Never know. The best way. So, can any of your fans maybe expect? Uh, uh, the, so, you got the acapella coming up. Anything else that they can expect? Yep, we we got the acapella project that's going to be available online uh, probably next week, and then and then the pledge music campaign to uh, produce our our. We have to make this last record. We're not looking for a record deal. We're not looking for a million seller. You know, we're, right. we've written songs, and we have people who are interested in what we write and what we record, and uh, we're going to do this. So the Pledge Music campaign is up and going. The acapella thing's going. We're having a blast on this tour. We're going to be playing uh, all winter, all over the country. Wow. We, uh, our family band. So it's pretty amazing that we're, we're peaking like now because we're so old. Well, I love it, man. Keep doing you. Uh, is there cool. any... Yeah. Do you want to plug social media now so fans can follow you? I'm oh, look, social media. please, yes. Go to our face, Council's Facebook page, Council.com. We have, and which will link you to everything, all of our new music, which we don't play in this show, but it's available online, of course. Right. We're, we're out there, and chase us down. We can't wait to see everybody. We're very grateful to be here still. Well, Bob, I appreciate you. I mean, you. this has been an honor, man, to have you on here. Me too, Cody, really. And it's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate, again, the time that you took and out of your day. See everybody at Jim Thorpe, man. <laughs> All right, Bob, have a good rest of your day. Keep All right, living. Cody, thank you so much. Yep. Bye bye. Peace.